So now I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, Tom Pizer. Tom is the Director of Learning, and Learning Technologies for GP's Learning Solutions Group, and he has 20 years of experience in the technical digital media field. He has an extensive background in a variety of creative and technical mediums, including digital media specification, production, testing, and implementation. During his career, Tom has created and managed hundreds of hours of educational, instructional, and entertainment-based media, and has served clients on a wide variety of markets, including federal government, trade associations, commercial organizations, and educational institutions. A key aspect of Tom's responsibilities includes staying abreast of emerging technologies and in tune with the latest development methodologies, standards, and practices. He takes part in a monthly advisory meeting for several GP's clients to ensure that their courseware is of the highest caliber, meeting rigorous development requirements. So with that, Tom, I'm going to turn the session over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. I'm very excited to be presenting uh, this topic. Our team has been doing some pilot work with iBeacons, and I'm happy to share some of that knowledge with you. Um, it continues to be a really exciting time in the world of mobile development, and with the proliferation of mobile devices in the workplace with uh, Bring Your Own Device to Work, uh, BYOD, it's an even more exciting time to be a learning developer. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing the introduction of new mobile technologies and the convergence of others to create new opportunities to reach employees and learners. Uh, the technology that I'm going to talk about today are, are beacons, um, and they call to mind an iconic movie scene from The Matrix. Uh, for those of you uh, who aren't familiar with The Matrix, I'm a sci-fi movie fan, and when I watch the following scene where our heroes, who live in a dystopic real world, uh, but, can, but can project themselves into a uh, digital alternate, alternate reality, are trapped by evil agents, and whose only a chance to escape is if they can learn instantly how to fly a helicopter. Uh, as I sat there watching it, it brought to mind the idea of reaching the learner at the point of need. Um, Kayla, could you go ahead and uh, play that? So hopefully everybody was able to uh, see and hear that, but um, the idea of being able to reach that learner, uh, whereas we're obviously not to the point where we can reach right into to someone's brain and, and give them the requisite knowledge that they need, uh, the idea of taking advantage of a mobile device and um, meeting that learner at the moment that they need a piece of learning uh, really struck me at that time. And, um, of course, that was a fanciful idea, but more recently, uh, some new technologies have been released that make it a little bit easier for us to anticipate those learners and, and reach them uh, in the workplace. Uh, iBeacons, uh, more properly, uh, they're, they're really just called beacons, are devices that can be placed in a specific location to simply alert a mobile device to their presence. They're part of a larger category of technologies that have been engineered to recognize uh, a mobile device's physical location or proximity in order to create opportunities for a higher order of communication or interaction. You may have heard of some of these technologies, and I'll reference a couple of them really quickly. Uh, the Internet of Things. Um, you may have heard this term coined, and it's the idea that things in your regular world are uh, becoming uh, communication enabled or internet enabled. And so some of the things you may have seen out there are home security devices where you're able to access and control them from your mobile device or even your thermostat where it is now uh, communication aware so that you can uh, uh, you know, get within a geographic proximity to your home 
and it can turn on your uh, your air conditioning for you, knowing that you're that you're going to be home soon. So that's the idea of the Internet of Things, uh, or geofencing, which is creating uh, kind of a virtual fence around a physical location, and by knowing uh, where someone is, you can present them with uh, information uh, geographically. Um, and near-field communications, or sometimes referred to as NFC, which you may have seen uh, through things like Apple Pay, which is making a splash in the McDonald's world where you can just take your mobile device, take your smartphone, place it up next to the register, and, and pay for your food. Um, the iBeacon uh, communication language was introduced by Apple in uh, iOS 7 in 2013, so it's actually it's a relatively new technology, but it's not all that new. We're just beginning to see it uh, incorporated into uh, the, 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 the mobile uh, hemisphere. Um, it's a communication technology for small transmitters, and as you can see on the image on the right, uh, these transmitters can be very small. Uh, they can be placed, they can be stuck up or, or uh, bolted on or affixed to virtually any location, uh, indoors or out, depending on the type of beacon. And what they do is they transmit a unique ID and their range. That's very simply it. They just say, hey, I'm beacon such and such, and I am uh, within a close, far, or farther proximity to you. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. The beacons that we have been uh, toying around with, or I should say piloting, uh, have been uh, roughly about $30 per beacon. And uh, they've got a battery life, so that is that they can be deployed uh, on their own. And the idea is, you can see on the uh, illustration on the lower left, that they can be used to anticipate when someone is near a physical location. In this case, it's being promoted for store use. Uh, once someone is in a store, it can recognize, geographically speaking, where you're at in that store, if you're in home electronics or if you're in uh, uh, you know, a section, uh, you know, a CD section or, or what have you. And for anybody who has tried to use their phone inside of some of these uh, uh, stores, uh, you'll know that your GPS is very often uh, not able to communicate out. So they provide some of this geographic positioning. So how do iBeacons work, or how do beacons work? Um, you can think of them uh, almost similarly to a, uh, to a lighthouse. That is, that they uh, are placed into a physical location, and they simply transmit a signal. In that scenario, your phone is, uh, is the ship on the water that passes within proximity to that signal, and based off of how close or far you are, determines um, how strong that signal is. Um, in order to interact with a beacon, uh, the, uh, the user would have to download an application. So these iBeacons or these beacons can't simply just transmit to your device. They're just, they're just transmitting in, into space at, at all times. Your device has to be set up to allow them to communicate uh, and uh, to do anything with that signal once it's been received. Um, the mobile application is activated by the user, so it's at the user's discretion whether or not they're using it. And the mobile application itself is what performs the function. So again, the beacons are just say, you know, simply saying, I'm out here. It's the mobile application that is providing the functionality. So the mobile application is determining, now that you're near this beacon, what is it going to do? And based off of the type of application that you have installed, that's what's going to provide you, the user, with the functionality. And we're going to show a couple of examples today. So how are beacons currently being used? The technology is uh, emerging like any other technology. And of course, one of the first things that, uh, uh, that, the, that the market does is look for a commercial use. For this. So that, again, brings together, brings to mind uh, another sci-fi movie. For anybody who's familiar with Minority Report, we have a, a hero, uh, John Anderton, who once again is running away from his pursuers. And uh, as he's running from his pursuers, uh, these store locations are uh, scanning his eyes and providing him with uh, a, a consumer experience. Hey, John Anderton, uh, 
uh, we, you know, how, how did you like those genes that you got from the gap the last time? And uh, we see that it's been a while since you, since you purchased here, and, and we'd like to offer you a deal. Well, the commercial use is, is looking at ways to employ beacons in order to uh, promote uh, uh, consumer loyalty. But in a slightly less comical and, and uh, uh, I guess, less dystopic view, there are some real advantages to here, uh, to, to, here to using beacons. Uh, informationally, we can use them uh, in museums and tours. Uh, people can be, can, can be given information uh, about a particular uh, uh, item in a collection. Um, they can be given uh, directional information if they happen to be lost on, on some larger grounds. Um, they can be used interactively. Uh, if, if anybody's familiar with geocaching, they can be used for scavenger hunts, and these can be uh, great for uh, group activities. And educationally, they can be used for performance support. So as you can imagine, you can place these strategically near areas where a learner needs to know something right this moment. So we'll take a look at a, a couple of examples. How, how are these currently being used? Um, Major League Baseball has an application that they have been prototyping and are now rolling out to their uh, major ballparks around the U.S. and Canada. The idea is to create a personalized user experience, a personalized customer experience. So the application is more than an iBeacon application. Uh, iBeacons are certainly an aspect or a feature of it, but the idea is that I can be a registered user. I can purchase my ticket to, you know, to an upcoming ball game, or I can purchase season tickets. Uh, it can present me with my tickets not only for the ballpark, uh, but for any special deals that I have or uh, for my parking. It can offer predictive sales. So as soon as I get to the ballpark, an ID can, can, can strategically notify me that, hey, welcome to the ballpark, and uh, we'd like to offer you a, uh, a free T-shirt for, for being here today. Or uh, we see that uh, we don't have full capacity today, and uh, there, here's a complimentary upgrade to a better seat than where you were uh, currently located. And then again, you know, for the educational part of it, it can offer historical information around the ballpark about, about the players or, or about the physical location. And this information, of course, because we're talking about mobile technologies, can be updated on a regular basis. Uh, the Antwerp Museum is using this purely in an educational uh, uh, perspective. Uh, Rubens House is the converted home of Peter Paul Rubens and, uh, in Belgium and was acquired uh, by the city in 1937 and offers a digital docent to follow you uh, or to take you around uh, the museum. And you don't have to follow a specific tour. So because beacons have been placed strategically throughout the museum, you can wander through the museum and you can discover things as you go. Uh, you get to a specific location and not only do you get information about a, uh, a particular exhibit piece, but you're also able to interact with interactive activities, um, uh, see x-rays of, of, uh, of the paintings, uh, get supplementary videos uh, about, the, about the physical location. So the idea is to foster uh, and encourage exploration throughout the museum. How can iBeacons be used in learning? Um, uh, people forget things. And uh, it was demonstrated by Herving, uh, Herman Ebbinghaus in, in his research in 1885 that uh, learners begin to, their, their learning begins to fall off, sometimes almost immediately uh, after they have learned it in the days and weeks following the learning. Now, he was experimenting with uh, nonsense words. And so it was much easier to forget. And of course, context and, and uh, learner buy-in plays into this. But there's no doubt that learners forget things over time. The idea of being able to augment that learning through booster activities by recognizing where that learner is. Let's say, for example, a learner is near a piece of equipment and they haven't certified on that piece of, equi of equipment in a while. Well, this, this application can identify where they are geographically, uh, that uh, can go back and access their training record and, and see, hypothetically, you know, whether or not they've taken some compliance training or some safety training, and then can present that to them. So it represents a real opportunity to reach them the moment that they need that learning. So how are we envisioning 
uh, using iBeacons in learning. Some of the things that we're looking, looking at uh, fall along the lines of uh, learning at the point of need, uh, onboarding, and performance support. Learning at the point of need, and in our example on the far left-hand side, might be in the, in the example of a, uh, a sales associate at Best Buy. And uh, the, the information uh, about uh, electronics and about uh, devices um, updates on a frequent basis. So they uh, need up-to-date information or up-to-date promotions. Uh, this is an opportunity to give them that. Uh, onboarding, we can anticipate when a new employee gets into a physical location and present them with information that's very specific to their uh, onboarding experience. And in performance support, again, we could have a, a construction worker or someone out in the field and, and iBeacons affixed to specific equipment can present them with information on how to use that equipment or refresher information if they haven't used that equipment in a while. Are they secure? One of the, one of the most typical questions, can people see my data? The answer is no. iBeacons cannot see your data. It's, it's the mobile application that you have to be aware of. So anytime you download an application, this is true. Uh, we, as consumers, provide a lot of information to Facebook, and anytime you download an application, you have to make sure that the application that you're using, you're willing to, uh, uh, you know, uh, present that level of information. Can they give other people my, my location? The iBeacons themselves cannot identify your location. They can't even identify you. Again, it's the application itself that provides that information. Uh, can I stop an application on my phone from detecting beacons? Absolutely. You have the control, like with any GPS-style device, to turn on and turn off those notifications. Um, in my follow-up blog post and in a white paper, I present some advantages and uh, uh, some of the challenges with, with, beacon, with beacons. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to being able to cost-effectively uh, meet these learners at the point of need. It improves productivity and, and, and uh, simplifies some processes. Some of the, uh, some of the um, limitations and considerations is there, there could be a lot of maintenance uh, that goes into these because, again, they've got a shelf life. And you've got you've to update information and you've got to make sure that these beacons uh, are still relevant. So with that, I see that we're, uh, we're running low on time here. Um, I'd like to go ahead and, Kayla, uh, open it up to questions if folks have anything. Yep. yep, thanks, Tom, for that great presentation. There was a lot of information shared. This is an interesting topic. Um, as you mentioned, we only have a few minutes left. So as a reminder, if you do have a question, be sure to enter into the Q&A module at this time. Um, he covered a lot in, in less than 20 minutes, and so there's still a lot more information to discuss. We encourage you to, incur, encourage you to continue the conversation with Tom past this webinar, and his contact information can be found in the slide deck. I'd also like to remind everyone that the recording and slides from today will be sent to the email address that you provided. We'll be sure to get this to you within 48 hours. And um, special for everyone, we'll also be including a link to a follow-up blog post where Tom will address some of the key takeaways from today, as well as a link to download his new white paper. And this is going to um, give you guys access before the general public. So the questions are rapidly coming in. Uh, we'll go ahead and get with the uh, first one. This one is, what is the range of an iBeacon signal? Uh, great question. Uh, the range of an iBeacon signal uh, can be anywhere between uh, 200 and 300 feet. Uh, I, I would say that our experiments show that to be on the lower side of that. Um, they also can uh, be ratcheted to uh, reduce their signal strength if you want to get um, uh, a little bit uh, closer, more uh, minute in, in uh, recognizing when learners or when individuals are, are close to a specific object. I'm just going to kind of start rolling through these because there's a lot coming in. Um, the next one is, I love this concept, very relevant for daily business. Is it expensive? Uh, great question. The beacons themselves are, are really cost effective. They're about $30 a beacon. Uh, the cost for development is like any mobile development uh, experience. So uh, mobile development can, can get expensive. Um, you're defining an application. You're building an application towards a specific smartphone or, or mobile device. Uh, there's a certain amount of uh, testing uh, and development that goes into that. So I would say that you're probably looking at rolling out a full mobile application when you're, when you're implementing this. So on the beacon side, not so expensive. On the mobile development side, that's where the costs go up. 
Great. I'm going to go ahead and do two more. There's a lot more coming in. As I mentioned, um, we'll be doing a follow-up blog post, so I'll make sure if your question is not answered, I'll give that to Tom, and he can include that in the follow-up, um, which will be emailed to you. So the next one that just came in is, are iBeacons only used for Apple products? If so, do they have to be current, like iPhone 5 or newer? Uh, great question. Uh, they are not only used for Apple products. Uh, the, the iBeacon communication uh, method and, and language uh, is currently also used in Android devices. They do have to be more modern devices, so it has to be a device capable of running iOS 7. I think it's uh, iPhone 4S and up. And uh, for Android devices, it is, uh, the, I can't remember the name of the operating system, but it's 4.3 and up. Great. Another uh, great question just came in. Um, let's see. Do iBeacons have any limitation on the number of devices to which it can interact with at the same time? Um, it, it would only be based off, it, it's transmitting continuously. So uh, those devices uh, capable of receiving a signal, it could be any number of devices within a geographic location. You're only limited by how many people can be at that physical location. Great. Um, let's see. I am going to do one more. Uh, we'll throw one more in here. You are mentioning providing media-rich information through iBeacons. What are your thoughts on using iBeacons in, um, let's see, uh, along with augmented reality? Ah, that's a neat question. Um, God, I, I hadn't thought about integrating iBeacons with augmented reality, but that's that's a great potential application. The idea that uh, a mobile application could recognize through proximity where you're at and then uh, be able to um, then use that same device to recognize physical features and present uh, uh, 3D information in that space is, is a great potential application. I can see augmented reality and iBeacons working very well together. Great. Well, we do have a few more questions. We'll have you address those in the blog post, which will be emailed to everyone. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and start to wrap things up right now. Thanks again to our speaker, Tom Pizer, and thanks to everyone who attended for your time and attention. We hope that you'll join us again for our next session, which is actually tomorrow. Uh, the title is Assess or Unleash, How Pioneering Firms Are Rethinking Their Approach to Performance Management. Again, this is tomorrow, June 24th. For GP Strategies, I'm Kayla Roth, and I wish everyone a great day. Thank you, everyone.